welcome to Anton's TV. My name is Jack Duxbury and this is Andy Mack. He's the Maltese Falcon and in this video I'm going to ask all the questions I've ever wanted to ask one of the world's best talk boxers about talk box and hopefully you'll learn a lot about talk boxing too. Let's get into the video. Andy, I've tried to keep my mouth shut all morning. We filmed a video and we filmed the video on your latest pack available for NPC users, right? What was That's that right. called? Funkarama by Divided Soul. Hits you all of that kind of iconic zap, late 70s, 80s era of funk and soul with drums, talk box sounds, everything. Awesome. So yeah. yeah. So if we'll come down, demo it, bring the kit. And I don't know when that video comes out in time, but uh, be sure to watch that video and all the other videos that Andy kindly comes along mm -hmm. and does on the NPC. Now, because something had to get move, moved around, I'm in the lucky position that you agreed to bring down the talk box. A little bit of, uh, there's gonna be a lot of talk in this video, stop and starting, because uh, it's gonna be very selfish. <laughs> I'm gonna get to ask all the questions I wanted to ask. I first messaged you about 15 years ago, yeah, I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, when I was in the store. Yeah. And I can remember asking someone in the store, you know, you don't hear much about TalkBox. So do you know anyone who knows about it? And they went, oh, Andy Mack, used to work here. And uh, then I, I messaged you and you're really kind. You explained about the gear and you gave me some really good tips. And I was young and naive. I didn't listen and I couldn't find, YouTube wasn't about. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really know how good you were at it. Mm -hmm. And you're amazing at it. Even though you head up Akai and all the NPC, this is, about uh, honestly go check where can people see you talk box right now if they want to just type it in really anywhere instagram i've got some videos on the akai site as well where i've used different talk boxes w with the npc doing beats and everything mm -hmm. so yeah and you know I've, I've toured with a few people as well dub effects played some gigs actually just before covid actually we did some live shows and that was quite amazing so yeah, and I've featured on a lot of records. Uh, Craig David's last album, or his latest album actually, um, with Ella May, uh, Bobby V, Bobby Valentino, who did Slow Down and all of that mm. stuff. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff, man, over the years. Right, and we're so, going to yeah. dive straight in. Yeah. Tell us about this setup, please. And sorry, just to jump in, am yeah. I understanding this setup, um, is this kind of your go to setup? Yeah, this is kind of like the holy grail, I suppose, of, of talk boxing, really. And it's, it's, you know, it goes back a long time. And I, I was first inspired by this sound. Well, it's, it's really the genre of music it starts with. So I was always into beat making, R&B, 90s, all of that kind of hip hop stuff. But I was more gravitated towards R&B. And I used to listen to Joe DeC, Black Street, all of that stuff. And then, um, and then there was one song that was on a, an album that Teddy produced, which was by a group called Men of Vision. So there was there was a lot of these kind of groups coming out at the time, New Edition, like I said, mm. Joe DeC, etc. And I heard this sound at the back of the record, like it was kind of like the last minute. And I was like, wow, you know, what the hell is that? I've never heard that before. And 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 it was one of those moments that will probably never happen again because of the internet now. You can find out anything. And, um, and that was it. I was depressed for many years because <laughs> I didn't know what this sound was. And, and back then, the only way that you could communicate with people is by speaking to them in the studio or whatever. So you'd be like, oh yeah, do you know that da -da 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 Teddy sound or whatever? And they'd be like, yeah, he uses the talk box. And then you're like, okay, what's that? So then you find out what one is and then you buy one. And then I, I think I bought a black, Jim Dunlop and I plugged it in didn't realize it needed an amp or whatever I'm plugging in thinking first thing I was like how does this work you know I couldn't go to I don't think the internet had actually been switched on at that time it right? it. so I'm like okay right and so I had to I had the Nokia probably so in between playing snakes or whatever <laughs> yeah. right? um so I'm just like you know I've got this thing how does it work and that and then I'm like oh Okay, got to power it. So I remember I came down to actually Anton's. I bought the servo amps that we all used to buy with the passive speakers. Yeah, like NS10s. And yeah. yeah. So I bought a servo and plugged it in and just sounded awful. The whole thing did. It was just like I sounded like I had a, like a bag over my head and everything. 
And then I started putting it onto some records. So I, I had my I had my MPC at the time. I had my 2000 XL. So I'll be making the beats there. And then I was like, oh, I want to put this Toolbox sound. And it just sounded so awful. And then over time, probably like 10 years or something stupid like that, I started to realize how this whole thing came together. And the more and more you would speak to people, you realize that there was this thing, you know, you needed to get a custom amp. And, and then it was to do with the, the patch. You know the type of patch like you couldn't just turn on a keyboard and go to a patch like a brass sound and wow there you are but that's what you would do back then you would find a patch and go oh maybe that's it because again you didn't know that you had to crafted the patch so uh, i was i was saying earlier it's very similar to like brian may you hear his guitar playing instantly you go that's brian may you could pick up his same guitar and you just wouldn't sound like him. You know, it was, it was, it was that, it had that kind of identity. So, um, so then I discovered how to create the sound and I was getting closer and closer, but then you realize that you, you have to learn how to play it. It's even if you're a keyboard player, you, you have to learn melodies and dictation, uh, articulating the, the notes and, and, the, and the words. And it was so complex. And then, then you go down the road of learning harmonies and, and stacking and, and then the recording process, you know. So it, it was, um, it's so gratifying when you play it on a beat. Like I do, what I do on Instagram, I'll have the MP, I'll play a beat, rip over the top of it and stuff. And I've had so many people hit me up because a lot of people can't do it. And a high majority of people can't do it because it's a very unique skill set. And um, and I've been fortunate enough to meet some of the, I suppose, the best people in the world that I've, you know, the first thing I asked them is like, I remember the first time I met Teddy, I was just hit, hitting him up about the sound and everything. My good friend Bosco, who created the Electro Spit, you know, about that? Yeah. he's an amazing guy. And, um, you know, I, I, funny thing, so one of the first songs I played on YouTube, it was two actually, it was Deep by Blackstreet and Shutterbug, right? which Bosco played on, blah, 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 blah. And I remember he, he sent me a message on YouTube on the comments going, hey, man, I better watch out for you. You're going to make me look bad, right? <laughs> and that was the first communication I had with him. And now I meet him in, in the US at NAMM all the time. And, um, and the funny thing is as well, what a small world this is. So I, probably like everyone, never check my messages on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I had this message, and it must have been about four, four or six week delay. Anyway, this producer act said, hey, listen, we, we want you to play on a record. We're working on a record with Dua Lipa, right? And anyway, I was like, ah, oh, shit. Anyway, so I quickly messaged them, and they were like, oh, no, no, it's okay. Uh, we, we've, we've already done the record now. Bosco was doing this thing called Talkbox Tuesday, and I started to get some of the UK guys involved. There was so there was Brian Henry who plays with Soul yeah, to Soul. Yeah. Brian, Local amazing Guild guy, Fordian. yeah, good friend. And um, so he came on and stuff like that, and it was so cool. And anyway, on one of the calls, we were talking about this um, this Dua Lipa track, and we didn't. Me and Bosco didn't realise that we'd both been hit up at the same time. But he answered the message, <laughs> and I didn't. And obviously, it turned out to be one of the biggest records. And I have to admit, I'm so happy he did it because he designed the electro spit, and he's really created something very special for the community around the world with 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 having it on your neck and not using the tube. Mm. And that record is just iconic now you know but it just goes to show you that it's a very small community that we have mm -hmm. and you know a lot of these tracks get passed around and you're to in the it. same guys yeah you're in it, and I'm that's, in it yeah so for all that way back me asking you like yeah. now you're still and this is the angle that i want to get at you're going to learn from one of the best let's start at i will tell you one more quick story yeah cool, hit me. so when i did craig's album um I'd obviously listened to Teddy for so many years, mm -hmm. right? And I remember I was at Nam, and I just finished dinner and I was telling one of my colleagues about what I'd played on. Because you couldn't tell anyone because the album hadn't come out. And anyway, the album just released. And, um, and I'm, I wasn't really using Twitter or anything back then, right? And anyway, I remember Craig put up this message and said, I want to give shouts out to UK's Andy Mack. 
um, I grew up listening to Black Street and Teddy, and we've got this guy in the UK that just sounds on the money, you know. And it was it was a, it was quite a moving moment for me because I've been playing this for so long to be identified by someone like Craig who has been the, the shining star for UK R&B for such a long time, and then to pair you with someone like Teddy, who's a complete legend. So, you know, but my main thing is you, you've always got to be humble at the same time, because all of this is all based on relationships as well, you know, how you network on Instagram and everything by, you know, trying to get onto r records. And one of my successes of being at Akai is that I stay focused on the product and the music scene and what's going on all the time. You know, you, you really have to listen to what people want musically as well, because music changes, but you've also got to make sure that you, 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 you know the roots of the music as well, because that's also key. You know, our peers, the people that influence those people who influence those people. So it, it's one of the best jobs in the world because I can incorporate all my skill sets over you know 25 odd years being in the music industry from labels through to production houses, and then inject it into these kind of videos, man. Yeah, you can hear it. I, I feel like you're the, the new A&R, where labels aren't doing it, the way you're influencing the Akai sound. And personally, I love the everything you're doing there. On that, you can hear it. And I'm so pumped about this new pack. It really brightened up my day. I was having a crap, <laughs> crap day the other day. And I was like really going through the ring. And you phoned me up and said, hey, Jack, listen to this. And just played it <laughs> over the phone. And I was like, wow, you know, I'm bringing my top box. <laughs> And so I am so excited. One thing, let's just start at the beginning with someone. One, I think that a lot of people don't know what don't know how a talk box works mm -hmm. still. So just very quickly, this isn't to, unless you don't know, like you say, you're talking about it with this reverence, and that's because it's a very hard skill to master. How do you see the talk box? What's the process going on for you? So it starts off with the keyboard and the patch, right? So really a lot of the time, you try and find a keyboard that, you know, is preferably the right size for you. You can either use mini keys or full size keys, but you need, you need a sound source to drive the, the patch. And the patch is normally based on a, on a sawtooth. So obviously the, the, the DX is classic from Roger through to Teddy, you know, everyone, Mr. Talkbox, all those guys, you, you, you see us all using these, you know, it's like the thing to go for. Um, so you come out, go into the amp, and then you amplify the sawtooth patch and then you go straight into the talk box. Um, but that's just the, the basics, you know, it's so more complex than that because you've got to think about, okay, EQ in the sound, what's the volume that goes into the talk box, right? How much saturation do I have? How do I treat the sawtooth patch from the keyboard? How do I brighten it up? How do I bring the mids out? Is it too bassy? Because if you're a vocal, you've got to treat this as a vocalist. If I'm a vocalist, I might have a bassy voice, I might have a thin voice. Now, as soon as you go on a microphone, you might need to change the mic. You might need to change the volume. Everything depends on the individual. It really does. Um, and again, like a, like a guitar sound, really, to a different amplifiers, you get different kind of results. Same as EQs and everything. So. You've got to master all of those things. And then once, you, once you've once you got a sound that you don't even know if it's right, you then have to master how to play melodies and think like a vocalist. And then like obviously the pitch bend and the modulation, you're, you're basically pitch bending vibrato like a vocalist. And then you're, you're bending into notes, you're adding modulation as well to add different types of textures. So there's so many things to think about. Then you've got the harmonies of playing a melody, then working out is it a major or minor harmony, and then making sure that, you know, when you track that, how do you track it? Do you track it like a backing vocalist, where you do a, a mid, left and right, then a low, then a high, then a third or a fifth? And again, these are all trial and error. So when you, when you hear the sound of a talk box on a track, it certainly isn't someone who's walked up to it a month ago and just laid it down. It would be someone who's been studying it for 10 plus years. And a good friend of mine is called the Sound Oracle. And um, we did some stuff with him with M Audio a few years back. And he's Timberland's sound designer. And a podcast came up on one of my feeds. And I, was, it, I pressed it. It was so random that I did this yeah. because it's, it had 
auto-tune versus talk box in it, right? And I was always interested in that terminology. Mm. I think a lot of people are, because a lot of people think, oh, I can do that sound with auto-tune. Where auto-tune is completely different. Like, we've got auto-tune plugins in here, so we have our vocal tuning. But there's one in particular, which is the harmonizer, which works wonders with talk box, because you can actually sing the talk box and add harmonies straight to it. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. But the funny thing was, I was listening to the podcast and he goes, he goes, oh yeah, I wish Andy Mack was here from Mackay. He goes, yeah, he's a great talk boyzer. He knows all about that <laughs> Yeah. So you, you start to get a name for yourself around the industry of what people know you for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm really fortunate that everybody knows me from the beat making side, from knowledge, Akai. And then obviously R&B, talk box playing and everything. So, yeah, it, and for me, it's all about sharing knowledge so you can see more people doing it. And that's what I would love to see more people doing it. There's, I mean, it's pretty much all in what you said there. Yeah. What I'd love to is track back and go through those processes and ask you perhaps if we could maybe go through that, that chain and hear it and ask you to pick up the hallowed tube. Yeah. If that's right. So let's get it up. Like you said, you start with the sound source. So a saw wave for you. Yeah, it's you know, a, yeah. so if, if we just go to a normal patch, let's go to um, a hard brass, right? Um, and can I just touch on, we haven't yeah. said it yet, uh, the, the magic, the bit that I didn't understand, I think a lot of people don't get, is that the sound we're hearing is coming out of this tube. Yeah. Do you get it? It's, it's something I find with a lot of people. We, they still don't believe it's coming out of the tube. Right? No, it, it basically again, think of a vocalist. It's it's you're you're comp you're compensating the sound of your voice mm -hmm. with this. So you're not using your vocal cords. So the sound's coming out of the tube. The sawtooth becomes your vocal very, cord. And there's an amplifier in there that's hoofing it out at quite a volume. Yeah. And Andy puts it in his inside his mouth and then the microphone is picking up what's coming out of Andy's mouth. Yeah. And that's what you're hearing. So you need yeah. all this gear. It's quite an intricate uh, setup. Yeah. For and, most. and to go through, like, you know, when, when, you, when you start off with a, a, a normal sawtooth patch, it's very basic, right? So let's just say, for instance, this one here. So if we just go... Here we go. And you'll, find, you'll hear it's very thin sounding, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Right, where if I go for something a bit more like this, it's very muffled and bassy until you start adding drive. And then something magical happens. So if you think that you discovered that sound, you'd be like, oh, it's so muffled. It doesn't sound like a thought box. Because you, you don't know the process of having to mm -hmm. amplify that sound. So a lot of people don't even discover right. the right sound because they might go for something that's like thin straight out of the box as a preset. And you... But when you go to that more aggressive patch, it's got more bite. And it's the same with a vocalist. If a vocalist is singing, they'll have bite on the microphone. And, and when you start recording that process, it really cut, cuts through on the track. Mm. So you start to, like, once you discover the sound, you really start hearing the, the different types of tones that come from even each talk box each driver has its own unique sound as well and how hard you drive it so yeah there, there's so many different aspects of yeah. this like i've got like a, a kind of a roger troutman type patch here and this is this just gives you a different type of feel oh lady do, do, do. um but you play it different as well. Mm -hmm. if, if you're trying to kind of go for that Roger sound, it, you play it in, a, in an essence of how he would do a lot of the Zap stuff, where when you go to the Teddy stuff... Yeah. Completely different, you know, and... I wish you guys were here, because I can hear it 
coming out of your mouth. That, yeah. That's the sensation. And I've just got to ask a question. So we're hearing it through there. For me, is, have you got any tips for anyone about placement in the mouth it's... with the tube? Because that's when I first got one, I thought I'd sucked on it like I was... You, you, um, you've really got to else. put it right at the back. You've got to keep it tight to the side. But you, it's like left hand, right hand, whatever it feels so you more choose comfortable. whatever size... Yeah. Then you have to learn how to speak. You have to learn all of your articulations. You have to really go through your A's, your B's, C's, F's, all of the difficult words, your pronunciations. Um, and that's one of the challenging things for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then it's been able to come up with melodies and licks and stuff on the spot. And, and scales, you, you, you have to learn scales. Like, you know, I'm not a massive theorist when it comes to music. I, I can come up with some amazing stuff, but it does, it, it's not natural. I've worked very hard at it where I see some people who can just fly through scales. And I'm like, wow. So oh, you, it's beautiful you, playing. It's beautiful playing. You need to have some some sense of scales. Is the best way to start. So you can play a beat on right. and just start playing. And then you have timing as well. Everything's to do with timing because you can get you could be really sloppy. So there's all of these elements mm -hmm. to think about. Um, where if you look at like auto tune and retuning plugins, they're for people who want to sing. And the great thing about those plugins is that it gives you that very modern sound. People don't necessarily use them for retuning their vocals because they're out of tune. They use them because it's a style, mm. you know. So what I've been doing, I've been mixing some of the, the more vocal tuning stuff that we've got, mixing it in with this. So for instance, so my setup is going, the microphone is going into the MPC. And what that means is, is that I can now record audio straight over my beat, right? and add TalkBox instantly. And, and it's great for sketching down melody ideas. And a lot of the projects that I've been working on, a lot of the top line melodies have just come from vibing. And I think one of the, the, the tracks that I did, the bounce track, yeah. both of you have been humming the melody. Yeah, no, <laughs> bopping around. Yeah, it's killer. It's so, killer. Fun. so anyway, um, let me go to my audio and we're gonna go audio tracks here. And I've got a channel strip on that just boost my mic gain a little bit okay and then I've got a delay but I'm going to turn the delay off for a second and I'm going to go to the vocal harmonizer plugin okay and we're going to take this up here and we're just going to go to keep on C here and I can mix in the lead and the harmonies so what we can do now is go into the, the harmonies. You can change, wow. um, we can take it from, um, let's go to a minor, bring up the harmony levels. And also we can go in, EQ the harmonies and decide how many you want as well. So let's see where we are on yeah. it. And then you can go in again, you can pan these left and right, you can change the form. And so I can use technology to really help me with this it's sound. Amazing. You've basically railroaded the development of the MPC to become a talk box <laughs> best friend from the inside. You changed it from the inside. Can I, I'm gonna go back to this. I just wanna learn from, from you for a yeah. second, if that's all right, because it's such a rare opportunity. When, I, when you've got it in the side of your mouth, yeah. do, you, do you have a, a suggested position for people to put it? Like, is it between your teeth or to the side of your teeth? To the side. So you have to bite in on it. In that gully, right? by, yeah. yeah, okay. You have to bite on it at the back, the back of your teeth and to the side of your mouth all the time because then it lets the air through. So your back molars are almost yeah. squidging the tube down a bit? And you can't, you can't block the sound because if you bite too hard, you block the sound. And are you constantly, almost like the ombreture on a trumpet, are you squeezing down and... You're, you're, you're squeezing very lightly. So you squeeze very lightly on the tube at the back, right. which allows the sound to really travel around your mouth and down your throat. So then... It gets so much louder when you put yeah. it, when you're sat here with Andy, yeah. it kind of suddenly it just... Because if you, it's like a singer, like back in the days when I was doing a lot of vocal productions, 
we'd have singers in the booth and we'd be like, okay, you need to sing from your stomach, you need to breathe. And it's the same, like, so if I don't have any air. It's your body. Breathe. It's your body. It's your body. Oh. So you can and really push it out and stuff. And when you're doing the more higher stuff, like if we, you've got to be like a vocalist. Yeah, 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 yeah. In and out of the In mic. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Now, diction yeah. is a huge hurdle. The few times I've tried it, yeah. uh, have you got any tips for people about diction? You've got to emphasize every word. Every word, every single word. Otherwise it will just not come out. And it's funny thing, I've had people come up to these and try to, you know, just jump on it. And it's, it's, it can be a little bit embarrassing for the first time because mm -hmm. it looks easy, but it really isn't. And, you know, maybe you want to try. You've got, you've got well, a brand new tube. I've got a brand new tube that Stuart allowed me to have. Yeah. And let's do a switcheroo and yeah. I'll get in there and I'm, if, is it all right to just give Mate. me a few tips and watch yeah. me? I'll give so, it a go. So let's just do some, let's do a simple right, one. Right, we'll plug so. the tube in and we'll be back in two seconds. Back in the room, I've just plugged this fresh tube in. Now, there's going to be a few firsts for me. I've never played a DX100. Right. And this the, the make of this keyboard. Can I just, before I have the honour of touching, because I've always wanted to play one, why are they so special? <laughs> To be honest, it was really the only keyboard that was around at the time <clears throat> that people started using, you know, really because it had it, mini keys, it was a good size, you know. And it just, it was just one of those things that it just became the fashion, you know, for people to use. And over the years, more and more keyboards have become kind of into the talk box community, you know, the micro synth and stuff like that. But really, I actually use Hype Synth on the MPC, and I'll show you that after. And um, what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to give everyone the patch from Hype that I've created for TalkBoxing that you can run directly from your MP. Um, so it, again, because it's all based on a, on a patch. That's it doesn't it have to be this yeah. keyboard, but it's an honour. Oh my Christ. But there's a magic about when you play it, you know, like uh, anything that's vintage. Now, I've been watching you today, of course, uh, and um, what key do you like shredding in? It, I've seen a lot. it really it depends. Matter, no. Okay, cool. Cool. I think I think that's what you're doing, the baby stuff, yeah, then, yeah. right? Okay. Tubes going in. Yeah. Down the side of the mouth. Yeah. And I'm squeezing it a little bit of that. <laughs> yeah. Am I getting that's a bit right, nippy? You're, no, you're, you're fine. There's yeah. a really old video of me. Absolutely, <laughs> I haven't learned anything. And, and I remember that's where you gave me the shout out. Remember? Yeah, and yeah, one years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know, Christ. Yeah. So it's in there. Now, oh shit, I'll just get on with it. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> How do you do it and just not slobber everywhere? No, you just have a medal no. for just not looking like you've got a disease. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh my God. Right, that's the problem. I'm just worrying about the playing, yeah. let alone the singing. Yeah. And that's exactly what my, my man Oracle said. He was like, you know, Anyone who can play this has got skills, you know, big time. Yeah, it's a um, bit it's of that. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Uh, um... Oh, my God. God. What are we doing, baby? Yeah, you're kind of there. Go okay. On. I might go for a different key. I'm terrible in B. <laughs> I'm going to go there. Here we go. So I'm going baby. So, be, I, am I yeah, going baby? But, but also, you can't... The restraint to not just go, baby! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, but you, you can't talk you as can't well. You can't talk! That's the other thing that I think people don't tell. Yeah. It's like, you've got to be almost like a, a mute, yeah. like a mime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? There you go. Okay. <laughs> baby! <laughs> now, to me... It feels like I'm getting stuck up in the flesh. Should I make, yeah. make more space you, for it in you, my mouth? You've got to find somewhere comfortable. Oh God! You know, you've got to find you've got to find somewhere comfortable. Right. Okay. So not bit recently. There's that song that goes uh, tonight. Yeah, yeah. Like so tonight. Yeah. That seems. How am I going to get a tea? 
You got a t- okay. T- Let's try that. Because I'm, I'm just not a baby guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making excuses. You're a tonight guy. Hey, I'm a tonight guy, yeah? What an idiot. Okay. <laughs> I've proved that it's the mastery of and, like, and you're a great keyboard player oh, thanks, as man. well. But like, you know that. and this, I thought, and it just shows you, I've dreamed of years to play a DX100. Yeah. To, I mean, and then a, a real golden throw. And I can remember I bought one and I was like, oh, you know, maybe I should get the, you've just got, you've got to put so many hours in. Yeah. Yeah, Christ, years. Sorry, like, let's just get a tonight out. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, no playing, just tonight. <laughs> How do you get the nuh? Yeah. 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 Now emphasize it. Don't don't worry about the licks. Okay. <laughs> do. Wow, what on earth? <laughs> right, we're going to save you watching more of that. Hopefully we've proved that it's worth putting a lot of time in and listening to Andy. So we're going to switch back round and make better noises. Right, we just switched round and plugged our microphones back in. I, as you saw, failed miserably to say the word tonight. <laughs> Could you say the word tonight? Please, I can. and just so you can hear what it sounds like and explain where I was going wrong, perhaps, and where someone could do it better. Tonight, 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 tonight. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and there, I don't think I've ever seen a video where hopefully this demonstrates the golf <laughs> in uh, skill. It, it really is uh, amazing because oh, I'm watching and it's such a desirable skill. Yeah. I think people go, I had it recently with the chaps from Bastille where they yeah. got in touch with your friend yeah. about the ele- and they ended up buying an electro spit. Yeah. I think to negate yeah. Some of that learning curve. Do you, do you, yeah, it is. How do you feel about the electric spit? And I, uh, I love it because it gives you a different approach to that sound, you know. And the reason why Bosco designed it was really because of the restrictions. It's more than anything. If you're an artist, it's the, you don't want to be restricted. So remember, here I've got a tube, amp, but we've got all of this stuff. So I am restricted where I am. And I think Bosco played on the Grammys with, with Snoop back in the day and I think that was his moment where I don't want to be tied to all of this and have a you know 20 foot tube <laughs> running just, from you're it. You're a singer. Yeah, you've, you've, that's right, it's freedom. So, yeah. so it's, and it, all, it just all depends what you want. You know, you, you get a different sound from it, like all of these things, like each driver has a different sound. Like, you know, like you've got the Talk Star from um, Fingers, um, which is an amazing, and that's got the amp built in as well. So each one of these devices gives you a different sound and you find the ones that you're happy with. And I think anyone who takes this, this seriously will have a collection of different ones for di- different purposes, different types of tracks and stuff, really. But yeah, um, you know, any word, you know, once you, once you get the diction right, you, you then have to think about, you know, the coordination, the melodies, the timing. And you made a great point, uh, and I've noticed as well in your play, that uh, so we've just hopefully explained the mechanics of it, mm. uh, and like, however much you explain it, I can understand it's probably, you're tired of explaining it. No, like, no, not at all. No, but in a way of like, you've got to put it in there and figure it out, mm. but you've got to do the time, right? And figure yeah. out how to make these sounds. I, you know, suck for a bit, I think. Yeah, I, you know, I sounded like, I sounded worse than you when I started because I didn't, I didn't have all of this set up, <laughs> right? I didn't have the sound already. I didn't know I what the didn't, sound was. I didn't have a mouth. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, maybe I sounded kind of more, you know, muffled, like... <laughs> 
You know, really, you, just, you don't you don't know because what's I'm wrong. Because I'm playing the pimpest setup. Yeah. I was playing this beautiful patch. But you can hear as soon as I start driving the amp. So, and your ideas on EQ here, what you might, we'll put a sweep over from the Falcon. There's a three band EQ yeah. on this power amp. And so you suggest if your power amp didn't have, or your device, would you would you say an EQ is essential? Oh God, yeah. Right. EQ is the number I one. I never heard about that when I first started. Yeah. And do you have, what's your like, Again, two it, minute take it, on The EQ? thing is, it's the same thing. If you're a vocalist and you're using a, a mic pre, your EQ, they will EQ your voice. Mm -hmm relevant to your tone. That's, that's it. That is, that's, the, that's the one thing you've got to think about that when you're playing this, that you are a vocalist and you have to treat your, your setup as any vocalist would. And the harmony. Yeah, Like you were everything. saying, I'm just playing, I defaulted to my normal shred licks. Yeah. But then very quickly I'm there going, not only I'm struggling to even say the word tonight, but then well, it's not in the same tempo to say these words. So. For instance, let's 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 do some harmonies. Um, so let me show you something. So I'm using the vocal harmonizer, and what I'm going to do. So C sharp minor. So now, if I play a melody with no harmonies, okay. So so no harmonies. Let's bring in the harmonies. So you can use technology to help you lay harmonies down, or we can even record these. You know, like you could record the um, like a way a lot of us do it will be to go to an audio track. So I'd go to an audio track, and then I'd record this. So I'm just going to extend this to 16 bars, and I've got this coming through here. So we'll go. We'll think of a, a, a harmony that we want to do. So we think of the top lead line first. Yeah. So. So now we've got that down. So if we play that back, we'll come here and I'll go out. So now you, you, we need to work out the harmony. Yeah. So so do we do? We could do the same route, pan it left and right. But what I would do is start off with the bass. So you go an octave down. Yeah. So we go. So now. Yeah, straight away. So now we can go to another track. And I'm going to go to, again, I'm going to go to input number one. Mm -hmm. Just going to have my channel strip on there. So a bit of processing on a channel of fat, like you would on a vocal, again. Yeah, just fan it up a little bit. And then you you need to find a harmony. You need to, f like a vocalist, you... Don't use music theory and go, oh, I need to go up a third or a fifth or whatever. You can find the harmony and feel the harmony. So. Wherever, what feels good? Brilliant. So now you've got your three parts mm -hmm. and then you can start kind of panning them left and right. And then you could go to the top one. So you could take the harmony. It doesn't necessarily have to be a three part, but then you could get that real nice balance. So, gives you like a quick overview of how I can use 
audio tracks on here, lay down harmonies. Wow. But it's it's a case of just selecting the ones that you feel right. Sometimes you don't need three or four. Sometimes you mm -hmm. want to you do six. You could take the root melody. And if you do a high one, you need to treat this like a vocalist. And watch what happens when we scream this. That gives you that like full kind of falsetto type vocal. So yeah, that's really the, the secrets that are kind of behind how I use this, how I use the toolbox. Thank you. For Pleasure. That insight. Thank you. Pleasure. That was a. It seems to be. I am um, seeing you in full flow, being this close. Your passion for it is amazing, <laughs> and I can see you get lost in it, and you want to just go and do it. And yeah. do you still feel that way that you've just got oh, a passion God. for it? it? You know, I spend so much of my time just working on video productions, music productions, pushing the boundaries of what we're doing and having the ability to blend all of this knowledge and, and again, your passion into what I do every day is, is you know, you, you couldn't ask to do anything else in the world. But for me, it's also talking to people about it and sharing the knowledge. And like one of the videos I did with Live 2 with Electrospit, it, had, it was one of the best performing videos that we did in the Beats Academy because people were intrigued of how you could use a talk box with an MPC. And so let me show you now. I can, I can have the same type of sound running from the plugins inside here with an MPC. And MPK this is that patch you were talking about. Yeah, and I'll give the patch away as well. You can so see should we link. play, we'll play out with that? Yeah, I'll show you it, man. Let's do it. Let's set it up. We've just plugged this in. I heard one little snippet. Tell us what's going on here, please, Andy. So, MPK Mini, this is Mark III, probably the most popular keyboard in the world. Um, you see this everywhere for, for the reasons that you can do absolutely anything with it. Portable, pads, awesome key bed, USB powered. So I'm powering this from my MPC. I've got no power supply. We've been running here All for a patches. Yeah. We could be on top yeah. of the mountain right now. So I'm using Hype, okay? So I've got the Hype plugin, here, I've made my own preset just from a sawtooth patch, and I'm taking the output of hype through output number three mm -hmm. into my amp, and then the amp goes into the top box. So I can, I've now, I don't, I now I don't need my vintage synth anymore. Nope. I'm using the MPC. Do, 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 So, and what's great about this, right, check this out. I can drive my amp. Dum, 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 baby, tonight, yeah. I can add a second oscillator, right? So, you know, when I was doing the harmonies with the bass, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't need to do the harmonies anymore. I can use the second oscillator, pitch it down, right? 12 semitones or a whole octave and do this, right? Watch when it comes in. You hear it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now hear what it sounds like in here. Oh, 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 oh. oh no, no. Woo. So if we pump this up, hold on. that it's not the gear it's the player it's the technique and uh, yeah there's so much to unpack from this video I hope you learned something from it I certainly did and go watch all the other videos 
with Andy. And check out this new pack. Because yeah. out of all the ones I've heard, this is unreal. Yeah, so Funkarama, that's, mm -hmm. that's the pack. I'm going to give you access to this patch for hype. So anyone who's got an MPC 1, Live, Live 2, X, or even MPC software, you can just load this patch straight into hype, take an output, if you've got a talk box. How should we share in. it? Should we put a link on the video? Yeah, or? it's just, just a file and you can, you, I'll drop box it to you or whatever. And okay, then you can, we'll sort you that can out. Put it on the link. I'm sure the Falcon and, um, sort everything out. Thank you, the Falcon, for making the videos as always. And if you like what we're doing, consider subscribing. If you don't, uh, we learn from the hate, but um, certainly none today. Thank you, Andy. It's been an honor, a real as honor. As always. Thank man. you, brother. As always. <laughs>